Hi everyone, it's Melissa, and today I am doing a Friday Reads. I haven't had hardly any time at all to make videos in the past couple of weeks, so I thought I would do a Friday Reads because they are like quick and easy for me to put together and I can update you on what I've been reading and watching and whatnot. So starting with the books, um, it has been a fabulous reading month and I'm really excited to like put together my thoughts a little bit more coherently, cohesively um, for my wrap up. But I'm still like thinking about this book. Um, this is Between Two Kingdoms by Suleika Jouad. It's a memoir. It's about um, her diagnosis with leukemia when she was 22 or 23 and her year spent in treatment and her recovery and what reintegrating back into the world of the well is like when you've been dealing with illness for so long. And I just found this fascinating, painfully honest, and it will be one of my favorite reads of the year. Um, so yeah, if you love memoir and you have not read this, I would very much like to put it in your hands. The next book I picked up for nonfiction November is Trevor Noah, um, Born a Crime Stories from a South African Childhood. I am halfway through this, loving it so far. Um, I love all the childhood stories and anecdotes he's sharing, and I love the tone of this because it's dealing with some pretty serious, like, heavy topics, but it's told through the lens of humor because, of course, Trevor Noah is a comedian. And I do, I'm just finding the tone very successful. Um, so yeah, halfway through this, loving it. Um, I think this is going to be another five star read for me this month. So off to a very strong start indeed. Um, I have just started uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Um, I never read The Martian, so this is my first Andy Weir. I am not very far into it at all. I am 46 pages into it. I don't really have much to say about it because I still am not very far into the book yet, but I do like the kind of mystery solving element of this. So um, someone wakes up and they don't know where they are or who they are and they have to um, figure out everything, trying to like access old memories, remember what their name is, remember what their um, what their profession is. Um, so I like that kind of mystery solving aspect to it. So that's what I'm currently reading. Next on the docket, once I finish Born a Crime, I would like to pick up, um, another nonfiction. And this will be my last nonfiction of the month, most likely. I don't think I'll have time to fit in anything else. And that's Being Mortal by Atul Gawanda. And this was the one I was most looking forward to reading. And I've saved it for last because I just have a feeling that I'm going to love this so much that I didn't want to read the other nonfiction books on my list after this because I just felt like that wouldn't be fair to the other books. I mean, I don't know, maybe I won't like this as much as everyone else does. Um, and I'm loving Born a Crime and I loved Between Two Kingdoms. So I don't think I really needed to worry because they're excellent books, but I just really wanted to end nonfiction November with this one. So that's going to be next, um, next on the list. So that's everything I've been reading. I'm not listening to any audiobooks right now. I've been listening to podcasts recently. Um, the two podcasts I'm listening to at the moment are my favorite podcast, which is, uh, Word Matters. It's very nerdy, but I love it. Um, it's a podcast put on by um, editors at Merriam-Webster and they talk about um, like etymology and linguistics and grammar and I just, it sounds more boring than it is. I feel like um, explaining what this podcast is about, I mean, and you do have to be a lover of words to enjoy it, but I think a lot of you probably are. So um, yeah, that's my favorite podcast because... That's the type of person I am. And the other podcast I've been listening to a lot is um, the Dead Parent Club podcast. Um, the two hosts both lost parents in their 20s and um, they cover like different uh, 
topics every uh, episode. So there was one episode on um, anticipatory grief. So if you have uh, someone who is ill, and you're kind of like waiting for, you, you know death is imminent. Um, they had uh, an episode on um, what it's like being the surviving parent. So they had a guest on for that one who um, had young children when her uh, husband passed away. Um, they have just like they cover a variety of topics, but all through this lens of being someone who has lost uh, a parent. So I, I very much enjoy um, their podcast. I have to kind of be in the right mood for that podcast. But lately, like this month, I've just been um, kind of going through the backlist of a bunch of episodes that I have missed. So those are the two things I've been listening to. Um, in terms of in terms of watching, I finally finished <laughs> Stranger Things. I think last time I did a Friday Reads, I was still on season three and shared that I was a bit disappointed. And I was overall disappointed with season three. Like it wasn't terrible or anything, but it just wasn't anywhere near what seasons one and two were. Um, I have now finished season four and I am happy to report that that was much, much, much more successful. It didn't, it still didn't capture the, the magic of season one and season two to a lesser extent in season two. Season one is still my favorite, but I liked the first two seasons of Stranger Things. And uh, season four didn't get to that level, um, but it was, but I liked it overall. I had some problems with it, but I can't really say what they were because it would involve like a lot of spoilers. Um, but I think the things that I liked about it or the things that I liked about the storyline um, outweighed by a long shot um, my gripes with it. And yeah, I, I, there were certain things I actually really, really, really liked about season four. Still not as good as the first two seasons, but I was overall um, like satisfied. So I'm hoping that maybe season three is just a blip. I've heard that next season will be the last season and I think that's a great move because I just, I hate it when shows out stay their welcome. Um, my favorite show of all time is The X-Files. And if you know anything about the history of The X-Files, <laughs> if you were a watcher like me diligently every week through my entire entire childhood and teenage years, basically, um, you know what went down with that show. They stayed years past when they should have ended it. And I just, every time I see a show like milking the cash cow and continuing on when they should end. I just, I have flashbacks to the X-Files, like, no, end it now while you're still good. So I'm hoping that um, Stranger Things season five, like they'll have a great way to, I, I hope they have a great story to tell and that they can leave on a high note. That's my hope. So I think that's it for this week. As always, thank you all so much for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye.